uh, to my dismay, I learned a little while after that I uh, that I'm doing a streaming to YouTube for my webcam, and I realized a little while after that uh, that YouTube decides at 15 minutes and 30 seconds to cut you off from the audio. So this will be a part two of my uh, midterm communication project, and I we left off. Uh, talking about uh, man, the William Gibson, the uh, the steam science fiction novel, uh, sci science fiction author um, in the North uh, North American region, um, and we're just talking about his audience. And but then I kind of, after his audience, there's no like how like he had no communication really with his audience until there was two questions asked at the end of the lecture. Well. After that, there was a. Uh, I kind of asked him a question at the end, and that's kind of like when it stuck out to me when he talked about how he used Twitter. Um, and I was like, wow, this man's a little more elder elderly. When you think Twitter, you think hip, you think like Hollins and Kardashian. I was like, what did this Kardashian eat for lunch today? It's the same kind of like, uh, kind of like the celebrity creeper kind of, you know, tool for people. And well, I mean, I asked him, I was like, what does he use it for? And he told me he used it for, uh, uh, more for his uh, fans to respond to questions or respond to like funny ideas that they come up with and uh, kind of uh, post up things that he finds more interesting which uh, I checked on his Twitter later uh, later on and I noticed yeah he, he, it's pretty much what he said it's pretty interesting um, pretty interesting stuff that he, he put on put, puts on there um, the audience after he come up, they liked the session I mean they liked the session uh, that happened. Uh, they kind of they felt the same time. I'll kind of note later more in depth that they didn't like uh, the um, some people like I, one one person I talked to was like yeah I didn't really like the this, uh, the moderator the person who's interviewing. Um, but going let's go on and analyze the speech they talked about. We'll start with the description. Um, the man. And what was we kind of, kind of like the overbroading uh, point of the speech is he's the man who coined the word cyberspace in one of his books. So at the same time, you need to notice like, hey, like what do you think cyberspace was during the early 80s, and what do you think of the cyberspace now? So it's kind of the premise of since you created the word, like this man is very like I would say a very important speaker for this uh, humanities event because he's the man who started like using the word cyberspace before internet even happened. And now internet is the like I would say the dominant part of almost every single person's lives. Even if you don't think you use internet a lot, it's affecting your life. So I feel like the man like to notice like we're kind of have a man who started the idea, analyze what has happened to his idea now. It's very important and very influential, um, and very like and very knowledgeable to listen to. So first he talks about his history like and how he got into science fiction because when he was 13 years old he was a little uh, he was a little uh, kind of seclusive kind of kid you know uh, but he did fall in love with science fiction and at the age of around 16 17 years old he threw that dream away kind of a uh, writing science fiction but he kind of found it again back in the later 20s uh, and now he's a now a very critically acclaimed author so I would say good for him and uh, and thank you for that because uh, now. You created the word cyberspace, and you're a very important man now. So, more congratulations to him. So, uh, kind of notes on the internet. He talks about cyberspace early on, and how the common word was used during the 80s and the 90s because the cyberspace had this idea of a far away kind of premise uh, that it wasn't in, like it wasn't part of our daily lives, just somewhere else. And uh, but now he says that he no notices that cyberspace kind of goes going away now. And the word is fading because cyberspace kind of has a connotation of far away with internet. And now internet is part of our daily lives. It's part of who we are now. So at the same time, it's no longer some kind of far away. It's kind of part of us now. And, um, and he notices this is the problem that we have. It's going like, it's not a problem. He's just saying it's just an evolution of a word. And I mean, he's like, he's not mad or sad about it. He's just accepting, well, this is what happens. Um, a kind of a just a side note. Uh, during the speech, he talked about uh, he was uh, on the train or the bus sometime and see someone with their smartphone or a Kindle and he looked and it's the pirated version of his book. And uh, I mean, he doesn't know what I know. What I seem to notice, I kind of want to do a like kind of note. 
but he didn't seem to care as much. He, um, it's kind of says like he's more important about the person reading it and kind of he's kind of more analytical of the book. He's like, oh wow, this is very interesting. It's like this is more, you know, very well done. So he's not doesn't seem to be dismayed by it. He doesn't like get mad at the person for I guess stealing his book. He just he just seems to kind of passively be okay with it as far as I know. That's my quick note on that. Way you know, about pirated material. It's just I thought it was interesting, so I wanted to note it and I noted for the audience. Um, but also what he talked about later on was kind of a, how new technology. A very key part I think of the speech is how new te technology affected him. It was a question later on, and uh, and throughout the speech he kind of noted it. And uh, for example, how he got he gets ideas from like just running into things, and because of the internet today, well, I mean. He runs into lots and lots of things, lots of ideas. And he kind of helps with his writing and like, kind of like gives him new ideas about everything, you know. But it um, like ranges from that, like bringing new ideas, you know. Even um, how he writes, he started with a typewriter for about a novel and a half. But a novel and a half through, uh, he notices, um, hey, I get the, I get a new. He gets a new Apple computer, the first Apple computer. And he always continued with Apple then. And uh, obviously he loves it so much, but now he says he writes uh, he writes some of his novels on the laptop, and uh, sometimes he mixes it up with the iPad because he said to be honest, you know, it's more comfortable. Um, I found I found it pretty humorous um, to laying down on the couch typing in his novel, um, but that was like the main point of the speech. I mean, you can see the subtext is pretty clear uh, throughout the speech by uh, the constant reference to his trilogy and the word the trilogy they use the the point of phrase. Cyberspace, so it kind of has that subtext, kind of obvious subtext there that they're talking about in his book at the same time. To interpret it though is, um, to interpret it though is because he's using his own personal experiences of what he just like his ideas of what cyberspace was in the 80s and just like, like showing how those ideas have changed to 2011. So he chooses words wisely from uh, what he's seen from his experiences. So that's how like you like how he's chosen his words and how he's chosen how he's how he speaks about the event. Um, to evaluate it going on earlier, I, I told you about an audience member who didn't, didn't really like the interviewer, but uh, to be honest uh, about the form of communications, I felt like the, this presentation was a little disorganized, a little disheveled. Uh, there was no clear line of thinking, and just kind of no linear kind of questioning. So kind of going into the interviewer and bashing him a little bit. I would say, first of all, let's be honest, he said very horrible jokes, and I did not appreciate that. I might have laughed because one was pretty stupid, and you know what, I mean, that's okay, but kind of the first problem there, it's pretty easier to notice on the skin deep level than kind of the criticism, but also he did, I would say he did a mediocre job when it came to interviewing. He interviewed, like, for example, he said very, he said multiple questions, and he was asking one question, and sometimes he would just say a statement, which I really didn't appreciate. Because you know you're asking like he is there for a reason. You're interviewing him, uh, inter so I would say like I, I don't feel like he did a very good job interviewing the person. But I mean to like engage it, I still found it interesting, and I found it like I, I made my own personal reflection afterwards of like how I've seen the internet since 1993, how it's affected me to 2011, seeing how it's changed. For my parents using a basic email, like their own old, 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 old computer, to you know, being sending my parents emails while they're on a cruise right now. So seeing that evolution of the internet, you know, it changes us every day. Um, I'm gonna go on to the next speech and first one, and kind of apologize why the the speeding up of the the speaking, because um, I I want I don't I want to keep a limited time and make sure you're not listening to this for. Listen to my voice for a good 45 minutes. I'll keep try keeping it good, keeping it good under the 30 minute mark. So I'm like trying to pace it up a little bit, but keep all the, I'm trying to keep all the context in there, and the an, an, uh, analytical in there. So uh, the lecture for the next speech is a man by the name of Rocky Cole. He is the chair of the University of Chicago Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics, and uh, kind of a note later, but he's right now working on the project Giant Magellan Telescope. Um, the crowd I noticed there, there uh, there's not that many people there, but at the same time I noticed they're very astrological. There's the astrological community thing. Very, uh, um, they're very interested in the speech. And uh, but to be honest, at the end, uh, 
I went there and I said thank you for your time. I didn't have many questions for him because uh, I would say this uh, this presentation that I did is very straightforward, very factual. I don't say there was many questions about it. Um, I did just enjoy the speech and his enthusiasm, um, as well as the crowd. I can tell from the uh, that they found him very engaging and they liked his humor. Um, but to go on to describe like what he actually talked about at the very beginning it was a good majority of the speech. I would say very factual and historical information about uh, um, factual and historical information about telescopes, about planets, and how they discover planets about tel old telescopes, new telescopes, and soon-to-be telescopes. Um, but the very end, it kind of like, I would say, kind of became a little more reflective of what it means to have these telescopes. And like, to understand like these telescopes, I hope understand what the size of the universe is um, and the age of the universe to kind of notice like, how big we are, how far we are. And I would say, or he also pointed out, like it's to learn more about our history by looking up. By looking out beyond us, we learn more about ourselves um, and to see planets form, uh, stars uh, stars being burst apart and seeing other solar systems. Um, kind of gives an example, like kind of gives an understanding of Earth and its forming. Um, and also he poses the question, are we alone? And uh, he says within 20 years, he wants to say that he finds uh, someone, uh, someone of the other, another kind of people or another form of life on a different planet within 20 years. To analyze like, to analyze the subsects, well, he is a professor at the University of Chicago, and he's also working on this project called Giant Magellan Telescope, which, by you do the research at the University of Chicago, is part of this research project, and they're uh, putting money into it. And you can see why he's not, like, noting it, because he is like part of the University of Chicago, and he's an astronomer, part of the project. So you can see there's going to be all these talks about this uh, future huge telescope. By it sounds very impressive, by the way. Um, I can't explain to you in depth the details because I mean, as much as I did listen to it, it was still a little bit confusing. Um, I would still say uh, you can see why he chose his wordings because of um, his speech is very factual and informative. Because well, you know what, he is a scientist, he's an astrologist um, and a physicist. So he is very straightforward. He gets his point across. Um, his description is very clear, um, but he doesn't mention personally about his uh, giant Magellan telescope project himself, like how he's part of it. He just kind of mentions it and see like the importance of it and how he's excited about the community going in. So to uh, go and evaluate how his uh, how his speech went, his speech was very factual and informative. And I would say he got his point across, and he's very. Uh, descriptive and very uh, very well done I would say um, so I mean going on basically value like how he what he said um, like what he did in this subtext but uh, to engage the text a little more clearly like I would say like I've learned more about the planet around me and I think that like uh, makes me understand knowing more about the outside world helps to understand like the inside world to some, like, to some extent and how like we form and that, like looking at the different like um, study of their weathers on each planet, or the study of the textures, kind of gives an understanding of our own world um, around us. And uh, so, all these three speeches, all of course, are talking about humanities. But uh, one common thread that I did find was um, this. Uh, that all the sorry, I was checking. I'm checking the time really quick so I don't get cut off. Um, which I have about a minute and a half, so I should hurry up. Um, what I noticed about all these uh, events that string together were more about how technology has affected uh, societies as a whole. First, starting with you can see uh, the lights of Paris, how the technology. Of the electrical change the and sculpted the art community in Paris and the world. You see pictures of lights everywhere, and they went they went crazy with the lights because they found it was so cool. It was a popular culture during that time, and it literally changed the culture during that time. like changed culture because of this like technical technological breakthrough. And at the same time, you see uh, going on to the speech about uh, the science 
going to sci-fi speak and how they creating the word uh, uh, cyberspace changed the world completely in the idea of what uh, the internet is and kind of the introducing what the internet is like to that culture and to the culture that we even know today so looking at like in like you can see how that culture affected uh, the speaker himself and how uh, how it affected the speaker himself and how it through his own technology like his own personal creation with technology for example 